Welcome again to our Metrology Coffee Break. I'm Dragos Liu and together with our application engineer, Alan McNeil, will be your host today. We are pleased to present the Polyworks Inspector Probing++ software, a productivity solution for CNC CMMs aiming to reduce the complexity and accelerate the CMM programming tasks. In just a few minutes, Alan will highlight the following features of the Polywars Inspector Probing++. Shorter and easy to understand CNC CMM sequences, nominal features, dimensions, reports are created and managed outside the sequence editor. Automatic sequence editor. Based on the selected objects, the sequence editor automatically finds the proper tool orientation the optimized measurement order and collision free tool pass. Immediate feedback on the sequence editor. If illogical or incorrect operations are detected, it will allow the programmer to make corrections on the spot. Automatic detention, detection of potential collisions and automatic modifications of tool pass to prevent them. Measurement sequence can be used on any CNC CMM. A conversion tool will automatically adapt an existing measuring sequence to any of your CMM types and brands. Easy to add additional objects to any existing measuring sequence. CMM projects can easily be complemented with data from portable equipment and scanners. Addition of scanned surfaces or fixture. Alan will now take it from here. Please feel free to send us your questions. Enjoy the presentation and the coffee. Thanks, Dragos. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. As Dragos mentioned, this demonstration will focus on Polyworks Inspector's assisted sequence creation technologies for CNCCM apps. Many of you are probably already familiar with Polyworks Inspector on portable systems like arms and laser trackers. For you, the workflow for creating an inspection project on a CNC CMM should be identical. For those of you that haven't used Polyworks Inspector before, I've also included some examples of feature creation as well, but for this demonstration, most of the features and dimensions have already been completed in this project ahead of time. If you'd like to see more, let us know in the comments or reach out to us at sales at cmmxyz.com to set up a full product demonstration. Now let's get started. So right away, you'll notice that I have the CAD for my part, my holding fixture, and the qualifications for your MICMM table as well. Having all this built in the project will help Polyworks make sure that it is able to create a sequence that is completely collision-free. Since we'll be creating this sequence offline, I need to activate the offline simulation and then connect to my virtual CMM. One of the great things about Polyworks Inspector is that you're able to use all of the device interfaces, including CNC CMM offline simulation with a single software license. If you're already familiar with Polyworks Inspector, you'll notice that I have quite a few features in the tree already. Most of the work for this project has actually already been completed. For those that aren't familiar, I'll give you a short tour of this interface. The tree view is organized by object type. Objects like CAD files, measurement features, and reports all have their own branch in the tree. I can also make my own branches called groups if I want. In this project, I've grouped my features by the face of the part that they're in. You can see those here. I can hide or show any of these groups or expand them to see the features inside each group here. And then if I want, I can actually double click onto any feature in the tree, switch to the measurement tabs, and take a look at the measurement properties that are going to use when I measure this part. If I wanted to make any changes or edits to how this feature is going to be measured, I can come in here and modify in the key in fields to change the measurement as suits. So I'm going to apply those changes and that'll be stored in the tree. To create a new measuring sequence, I need to open up the sequence editor by pulling down the menu button here and selecting sequence editor from the drop-down list. With the list open, I'm just gonna double check that I have the appropriate tool loaded. There's my profile here, and then I have the appropriate tool angle as well. Because when I start recording this sequence, the software is going to grab all the current information, like the current alignment, current coordinate system, all the measurement parameters, and the tool that I have loaded as well. When we run the sequence on the CMM, Polyworks will need to know where the part is sitting within the machine volume before it can start measuring in CNC mode. 
Traditionally, this has required the CMM operator to take several measurements on the part by manually driving the CMM using a dog box. The PolyWorks inspector has been simplified using the CMM pre-alignment. The pre-alignment utility lets you define how the part is situated on the CMM, whether by my matching the axes using a pull-down menu or by selecting surfaces on a cat model. I know that the axes already match up on my part, so I can skip this step. I do need to take at least one measurement, though. I'll measure one point at approximately 5 meters from the X and Y origin on the top face of the part. This will be close enough for me to start running in CNC mode. The pre-alignment was added to the tree, and since I'm still in record mode, these two steps were just added to the sequence as well. So having completed the CMM pre-alignment, I also wanted to add a plain line point alignment into my sequence. I've already created those features here, so I'm just going to highlight them in the tree and drag them into the sequence. And this is the first instance of the automated collision detection warning me of an issue. Now I planned this on purpose and I know I'm missing a move between the CNC probe plane and CNC probe line number one. If I hover over the warning icon on the left hand side of this feature in the tree, there's a couple options. So I can use the analyze issue button and the software will show me exactly what move it is that caused that problem. And if I wanted to now, I could program myself uh, some go-to positions to get around this corner. But there's more that the software can actually do for me. So I'm just going to highlight this again and select insert go-to position steps. The software will automatically figure out how to get around this obstruction and add the necessary go-to positions in the tree. So with those features added, and I know it's a collision-free path, I'm going to run those. So I'll close the Analyze Utility. And from this point in the program, I'm just going to execute all of those features. And there we go. So the last step here then is creating my plane line point alignment, which in PolyWorks we actually call a plane center axis center point alignment. I'm going to use plane one for the plane in this alignment. The axis will be line number one, which is measured across the front face of the part, and then I've got the intersected point on the front left hand corner. I'll confirm that alignment. And because I'm not in record mode, I'm going to have to drag that across into the tree. There we go. All set. So from that first example, you can see that PolyWorks has some pretty intelligent tools for helping me to manually build this uh, inspection sequence. But it can do a little bit more than that as well. So I'm going to take a look at all the features I've created on the top face of this part. And instead of simply dragging and dropping from datum A down to circle 19, into the sequence. I'm just going to select all of those and I'm going to open up the Edit Sequence of Measurement Path Interactively tool. And what we're going to do is ask the software to add these selected element items to the sequence. But it's got a few other options set up here. The first thing it's going to do, if we just wait a second, is insert them in the optimal path starting from the insertion point in that program. So you'll notice that the sequence in the tree view here from datum A, datum cylinder E, datum cylinder D um, is completely different in the measuring sequence. So it's already taken a look at the total time it would take to measure all these features and it's created a collision free path and we know that because we don't have any warnings down the left hand side here. Admittedly this is a fairly simple example and it was only required to have one probe position to measure all of these. Some measurement tasks just aren't quite that simple though. The feature I've called two-sided cylinder here on the front face of the part requires measurements to be taken both on the front side of the part and on the back side of the part. All I've done at this point told the software where I would like these points to be measured. So I have two circular sections, one at the front of the part, one at the back of the part, and they're both about three millimeters in from the face that they're being measured on. To make things more difficult, 
you'll notice that my qualification sphere is obstructing the back head, back side of the probe head. So I wouldn't be able to get in with the single uh, probe position to measure all of these points. Let's see poly what Polyworks can do with this. So I've got my feature highlighted. I'm going to open the Edit Sequence of Measurement Path tool. And I'm going to ask Polyworks to figure out how to add this to the end of my sequence. Keep in mind now, I haven't selected any of the tool orientations for this measurement. I haven't given any instructions about how Polyworks should break up this measurement, and I haven't given it any idea of um, the flow I would like to follow, follow through in the program. I've simply told it which points to measure, and Polyworks is free to do whatever it wants. So now that it's completed the sequence steps needed, let's take a look at it. In the tree, the cylinder remains unchanged. But in the sequence, the measurements for the cylinder have been broken into multiple probing groups. The software has also added multiple probe angles or tool orientations and all the necessary go-to positions to enable this measurement. So this was a pretty complicated task for a number of reasons. The software needed to make a lot of logical decisions and it's done so incredibly well and with no intervention from myself. The ability to break a single feature into multiple measurement groups is truly an innovative approach to CNC sequencing. It opens a very interesting door for us in terms of sequence optimization as well. An optimized path would be one that reduces the amount of wasted or excessive moves in a measuring sequence. You can only make so many gains by reordering the features in the program. The ability to reorder the points within a feature or even measuring parts of features at different points in the sequence allows for the maximum sequence optimization. Let's take a look at this next feature here, which I've got the bottom plane of this part. And for us to see it well, I'm actually going to need to hide some of the things I'm displaying here. So I'm going to hide my CMM table. And just for a moment, I'm going to hide the fixture CAD and maybe my qualification sphere as well. So when I double click on this feature here, you'll see that the points I want to measure around this part, um, there's eight points on the bottom plane, and they're kind of going all the way around the outside edge. If I bring back the fixture CAD, you'll notice that there are a lot of obstructions in the way to measure this uh, feature. So let's try that again, only this time I'm going to select the feature and instead of telling Polyworks to do all of this work but to add everything at the end of my sequence, I'm going to give it complete free reign to add whatever moves it needs and whatever measurement objects it needs at whatever point in the program it seems to think makes that most sense. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at what just happened to that sequence. First of all, the algorithm determined that some of these points could be measured with tool orientations that are already used in this sequence and added the necessary move to collect these points at that stage in the sequence. Some points needed a tool orientation that wasn't already being used, so the software added that new tool orientation and necessary moves for the measurements and it organized all of these measurements for both the cylinder and the bottom plane in an optimal order to reduce the overall execution. And you can see how all of these blue features, or the blue commands, these are the ones that were just added. All of the white commands had existed previously, and you can see it's really done a lot to um, kind of chop and change how it wanted to measure this part. I should point out that I could have just selected all of these features right from the beginning of the sequence and it would have taken Polyworks a couple of minutes to process this, but that would have been it. Unfortunately, it wouldn't have allowed me to demonstrate how all this stuff works um, quite as well. Okay, so to finish this project off, I think I'm just going to add a few more features and then we'll execute it. I still need to add a few more features from this front face group to the project, so I'm going to... Again, launch the Edit Sequence and Measurement Path Editor and tell the software to optimize the program and insert these features as it sees fit.
So it's finished the uh, measuring sequence and you can see again it's added those things in where it made the most sense in terms of minimizing the total tool path and also minimizing the number of uh, tool orientation changes. I'm going to make sure I have everything animated on screen here. There we go. I'll go back up to my execution point in this program. Verify that I have a decent uh, animation speed, so I'm running at 10 times the actual run speed. And we'll run through this sequence. And as it runs around the, the program, you'll notice that it is taking a lot of these hits on these different features in uh, out of sequence, even on Datum Plane B, which is the front face of this part. Um, it didn't collect all of the points for that plane in one um, go, essentially. It gathered most of them, and it's going to finish the others at a different point in the program. Oh, there's finishing the two-sided cylinder, collecting more points off of the bottom plane, then finishing datum B, going back to measure that large bore on the front side of the part, rotating the angles again, collecting some more hits, and there we go, now we finish. Now we are moving to the next section, question and answers. We have, we have here a couple of questions. Is it difficult to convert a portable project to a CNC project? Um, actually, it's not. It's pretty simple to do. And one of the nice things that we're trying to highlight in the video is how PolyWorks keeps separate the project in the tree view versus the sequence in the, the sequence editor. Um, so to convert a project over, you would need to change the measurement method. So have, if you had been extracting from scan data or if you had been probing on a portable device, you would need to change that first to CNC Pro. There'll be some default values that you might want to change for how it spaces out the points on those features. But once it's completed that, you just need to use the automated sequence editor to bring all of those features into the uh, sequence tree. And this leads us to the next question. Would the software work on any CMM? So I can't say specifically for every CMM, but certainly over the last 15 or 20 years, most major brands should work with PolyWorks. But if you're interested in looking into it, um, we'd need to do a site survey to make sure. Sure, and we'll do that. Can you tell us a little bit more about reporting? Is it graphical reporting available? Yeah, so there is a graphical report. And in the interest of saving time, I couldn't really give you a full start to finish demonstration of the software. So I wanted to focus on the sequence controls or sequence editor, but maybe in the future, we'll take a look at some of the graphical reporting as well as the report loops function, which integrates your project into say your own um, Excel templates. If you're working in say the aerospace industry, or you have to fill out customer PPAP reports, we can automatically um, populate those and adjust those automatically through the project as well. Yeah, that could be a subject for our next event as well. For sure. Thank you, everybody. Oh, sorry, there's one more question. Yeah, actually, is it? Um, yeah, so there was a couple of questions regarding importing different file types. So XYZ file types, or even say if you had a program from another software, like from PC Demus, could you import it? There's not an import button but there's certainly things that we can do to import an XYZ file if it's just uh, those, those three coordinates. Absolutely, you can use those for programming a CMM. And then there's even things for your interoperability between softwares. And actually another topic could be the macro script control language where we might be able to start automatically generating programs from other software, so on and so forth. So great question. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We would very much appreciate your feedback. Thank you very much for joining today and we look forward to seeing you at our next Metrology Coffee Break.